an analyst says results from Sunday's Senegal elections and last year's elections in Liberia have rekindled hope in democracy in these countries and hopefully the whole of West Africa. Opposition candidate Basiru Diomaye Fai defeated ruling coalition candidate Amadou Ba, who graciously conceded defeat. President elect Fah and opposition leader Usman Sonko were both released from jail a week before Sunday's vote. Senegalese political analyst Ibrahim Khan tells me that after the election results were announced, Monday felt like a second Independence Day with Senegalese celebrating late into the night. The celebration started even before the incumbent conceded defeat. People went out on the street in all the cities in Senegal, everywhere in the country. The young people went out celebrating. We have a new president. We have the president that we want. The way I describe it, it's like the new liberation in the country. It's like the country getting new independence. You know, the kind of regeneration for the entire youth because the, they believe that now their problem will be sorted out. You know, and I think uh, those kind of celebrations, those kind of uh, statements made on the street put some pressure on the new president because he has to deliver. He has to show that he's different from the previous uh, elite in the country who didn't care about the situation of the poor people. He has to try to find solutions to some of the very important economic, social, educational problems that the country is facing. I think the youth, by going out, was just telling him, you are the new one, we voted for you, we elected you, and you need to deliver. What did the uh, ruling party candidate say in his concession speech? I mean, what did he say to the new president? Well, he said uh, he had the figures. All the figures are showing that uh, Jomai Fai won the election, but now he considered defeat. He congratulates the new president and he wishes him, you know, success. He knows that the task is not very easy, but he hopes that uh, he will do everything to meet uh, the will of the people and also to deliver on a number of things. I think it was really a statement by a state person to another new state person showing that there is continuity in the functioning of the state and that uh, our democratic system is alive because this is the third time that we are really changing president through election. And I think that's uh, a very good sign for the, the Senegalese democratic system. Especially this coming on the heel of uh, Liberia, George Weah graciously accepting his uh, defeat in the election. And also, maybe this can bring some relief, uh, some relief to West Africa after all these uh, many coups. Yes, but it's good that you mentioned Liberia. I think there is a lot of similarities between the Senegalese election and the Liberian election. You know, in Liberia, 95% of the voters voted for two people, George Weah and then the current president. In Senegal, it's almost the same. 90% of the voters voted for two people. So it tells you about the fact that this is a vote of protest. We don't want the, the old system. We want a new system. And we want to show the new system that it's over. I think that similarity is really good and it really shows the way for other countries. You know, Guinea will be in election very soon. Mali is going probably for election. And I think this will really give the tone to the way that the youth should behave, to the way that the population must uh, use the ballot to show what type of society that they want. Because these coups were always about malgovernance, but at the same time, this coup never offered the possibility for the population to really express themselves in the way that Liberian and Senegalese happened this year. For me, it's a really strong message to the youth, to our population, that there are still hope if we hold on on our democratic system. They have a lot of imperfection, but we can use the lack of imperfection to really make sure that we elect the people that we want and we tell them that you told us that you can change the situation, here it is the power. But if you don't perform, in five years we will come back and we will deal with you.
And I think that's how our democratic system should slowly continue. I hope also that uh, institutions like ECOWAS, leaders like Tinubu, will take this opportunity also to try to adapt our community legislation to, to this kind of uh, expression of the will of the people. Ibrahim Akan, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you all, all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. The pleasure is also for us because you also help us to talk to our population. Ibrahim Akan is a Senegalese political analyst. He- Tanzania's opposition parties have been accused of preaching water but drinking wine after a study revealed lack of internal party democracy during their elections and primaries. The study on intra-party democracy in Tanzania, commissioned by the University of Dodoma and published last month, concluded that Party elections are usually stage managed to endorse the incumbent, particularly in cases where party constitutions do not specify clear succession path. The possibility of another candidate defeating the incumbent chairperson is generally very low, and the candidate selections mostly feature one aspirant who amasses almost all the party membership votes, the study says. Intraparty democracy in Tanzania's opposition camp has been a regular talking point among political observers for quite some time amid reports of leadership manipulation or power struggles afflicting majority of the 19th registered political parties. The consensus is that the majority of party leaders preach water but drink wine as they rarely embrace democracy within their parties as they demand at the general election. The latest study findings, which were authored by Udom political science lecturer Melki Sedek, Kaijagi, under the theme Assessing Competitiveness of Political Party Leadership Selection in Tanzania, brought the subject back into sharp focus ahead of Tanzania's local government elections in October this year and general elections in 2025. The country's second most popular opposition party, Act Wazalendo, recently gained products for achieving a smooth change of leadership which saw long-serving leader Zito Kawe step down in line with the party's constitution that fixed term limits. Mr. Zito, who held the topmost post of party leader for 10 years before handing over the baton to Dorothy Semu in internal elections earlier this month, said, in his farewell address third transforming the party into a genuinely democratic institution was what he was aiming for as his legacy